Hello again and welcome to another 5-minute Fly the Wing in-flight maneuver video. Today it's more about technique rather than an actual maneuver. Proper use of elevator trim will make your flying a lot more enjoyable and less fatiguing. When the airplane's trimmed, you can glance at a chart, look for traffic, or tune a radio, and the airplane will continue flying the way you want it to. Proper use of elevator trim is something most pilots don't grasp until they begin working on their instrument rating, because that's when you really need to maintain heading and altitude. You learn to fly with a light touch, making very small corrections and control inputs. Elevator trim is similar to cruise control in your car. We trim to maintain a certain attitude and airspeed in a particular flight condition, whether straight and level or climbing or descending. Trimming an airplane relieves control pressure and enables us to fly with a light touch to really feel what the airplane is trying to do. If we get into turbulence or an updraft or downdraft, we're going to detect that more readily if the airplane is already properly trimmed. However, if we're flying with a G.I. Joe Kung Fu grip on the yoke, we can't really detect a sudden or inadvertent change in attitude. Now, the first thing I want to mention about elevator trim is to remember to check it during your pre-flight. Recall the trim tab moves in a direction that's opposite of how we move the trim wheel. Be sure you have free and unrestricted movement of the trim tab during your pre-flight check. The elevator and trim tab use different connecting mechanisms, so check them both before flight. And if your airplane has electric trim, be sure you know where the pullable circuit breaker is located in case of a stuck trim switch or motor. Now, when learning to trim in flight, first get the airplane to the desired attitude, which results in the target airspeed, then and only then reach for the trim wheel to relieve whatever control pressures you're holding on the yoke to maintain that airspeed. I see too many pilots start trimming before they actually have the airplane where they want it, and if you try to fly with trim, you're going to be constantly chasing it, resulting in erratic control of the airplane. If you have electric trim, use it to make large changes in trim, but for that last fine-tuning bit of trimming. I find that just nudging the trim wheel manually rather than using electric trim is a more precise way to get the airplane trimmed without chasing it with a motor. Well, let's go out now and see how all this trim stuff works in the skylight. the Skyline today demonstrating the use of elevator trim. The first thing we want to do in any flight condition, whether we're climbing, descending, or trying to maintain level flight as we're doing now, is figure out what we have to do with the yoke to keep the airplane where we want it. I want the plane to fly level, but I'm having to push a little on the yoke to keep it there. So I'm going to apply elevator pressure uh, trim in the same direction. If I'm having to push on the yoke, it's going to be forward trim. I can do it with either the electric trim in the sky lane or use the manual trim wheel. And the goal is to be able to fly with a light touch, to be able to relax my grip on the wheel, fly with two fingers, and the plane will basically stay where it's at. If I want to start a descent at this point, I can either make my power change if I leave cruise power in and start to descend by lowering the nose. Now, in order to get a 500 foot, foot per minute descent going, I'm having to push on the yoke. So, to relieve that control pressure and having to push to achieve 500 foot per minute descent, I'm going to also dial forward on the pitch trim while I'm holding the yoke just enough to relieve control pressure. Now I can once again let go of the yoke, the airplane stays where I have it, 500 feet per minute, and it's going to stay like that until I make another pitch power or configuration change in the airplane. Common errors when learning to trim include confusion about how the trim on a particular airplane operates. Using the wrong sequence to trim, it should be used to relieve control pressures already being held. And using excess trim is another common mistake. Use trim frequently and in small amounts and after any pitch, power, or configuration change. Now in this video I focused on elevator trim, but once you get used to using the technique for that, adding rudder and aileron trim in your flying is easy. Go out and practice in your airplane and let Trim do the heavy lifting for you. Have fun, fly safely, and I'll see you again next time for another Fly the Wing 5-Minute In-Flight Maneuver video.